Hey, welcome back to the Acoustic Shop channel, your place for all things acoustic, and that includes mandolins, yeah. especially the feature of mandolins. Well, today, today we are going to be talking about, we're going to be introducing to the world the 1923 F5 Master Model reissue from Gibson. People have been waiting on this, I've been waiting on this, can't wait to tell you all about it in this video. We're going to play it, we're going to tell you what's special about it, what makes it new and interesting, and who needs to have it, and then we're going to put it through our review test, and we're going to rate it amongst its peers. Stick tuned in this video. Hey guys, welcome back. I am Jeremy, your host for today's show, and I'm joined by my co-host, and actually he's just my my gopher. Uh, this is John Chapman, my brother. He gets to hold a mandolin. <laughs> hey, I've been working on that lately. You know, I, every time we do a mandolin, you hold thing, it I don't in a weird way. Do I don't it. know what you every do. Every time you, you chew me like out. But I, look at this. I found a, 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 a hold. Oh, okay, whatever. Whatever feels comfortable. Uh, we're going to be talking about something very exciting. If you guys haven't got a chance to do so already, we do appreciate you being one of the 20,000 plus viewers at what? the time of, or subscribers at the time of this video. We're going for a million views, so uh, a million subscribers. If we can do that on this video, everybody gets one of these free. Is that um, true? No, that is not true. Not, none. A disclaimer. If you're gonna start disclaimer. Saying nothing like I just that, said. I just watched too much uh, of that uh, Mr. Beast, and he just gives away everything. So I thought I'd get in on it, and then I realized we got to pay well, for those things. He just got canceled for mentioning his name on our video. It's no, he's job. gonna he's gonna subscribe. He's gonna subscribe. Um, All right. But cool. if you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, also, interacting with it. If you talk in, in the comments down below and say nice things or mean things, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, YouTube sees that as, hey, people are interested in this or they hate it and we're going to just give them more of these videos. So make sure you comment below what you think of this. Um, more I am very excited. importantly, here's why you need to do this. Uh, all that stuff he so said read was our something. Mean comments. No, here's what you got to do. You got to subscribe to this channel because here's the deal. We have been getting the coolest stuff ahead of everybody else. And this is a case of it right here. This mandolin right here has been introduced uh, to us before it even actually got released so that we can show it to you on its release day. Yeah. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Took a little we'll arm be wrestling. able to get it done before anybody else, and you will see it first it's if you It's because of you, here. the subscribers. So that's thank right. you guys so much. Um, yes, yeah, so we'll go a little back history here. At the end of 2022, we got a notification from our rep with Gibson that said, hey guys, anything you have on the books as far as mandolin orders, that's it. We're taking no more new orders. They didn't even give you like a heads up, say, hey guys, put in your orders now. No. It was just kind of, if you have some on the orders, we're going to fulfill all those. But there's new things coming. It was even further coming. back than that. They stopped taking orders April of last year and then said, we can't take any more orders and then told us, at Whatever you got point, on the books, that's it that's for it. Uh, the foreseeable future. But we do have things in the work, in the works. And then uh, in January, we were at the Spigma Convention in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, um, mm -hmm. and I got notification: Hey, there's these two new models, and that's what they had been doing. They had been they, they eliminated all the other models, and they're going to focus on two models, and then later on maybe they start introducing some of the other ones back in. But kind of the retooling of Gibson, their plan was: Let's focus on two models. Very special because it's it's the uh, 100th anniversary of the Lloyd Lore mandolins from 1923. So they use that as kind of this uh, this goal. And the, the pamphlet they sent us said, hey, we got two ones coming out. One was going to be the F5, which we got another video that's going to talk about the details F5G. on that one. So check out that one. Uh, look, look for that on YouTube as well. That's an, one of the two instruments being released is the F5G with some new tweaks. Yep. Um, but the other one, a very exciting one, is kind of a new take on their master model. They had the master model Fern available. And this one is actually kind of a, a more specific to that date, the 1923 year, a reissue of the 1923 Lloyd Lore uh, style master model. So they did a few things different. They analyzed it. It's supposed to be a much closer reproduction to the way uh, Lloyd was building them. It is. In just hearing it, I know that that is the truth. And, and to Gibson's credit, their goal was to get that released on July 9, 19, or 2023 to be 100th anniversary of the July 9 mandolins. They didn't make it, so we, we superseded them and we got our, our uh, Bill Monroe mandolin out yeah, on July did. 9. Yeah, and we did. You guys check out that video, too. That's a very special project. Uh, we got a, a reproduction of Bill Monroe's Hall of Fame mandolin dated July 9, 2023, 100 years after his mandolin. So that's very cool. These ones were slated for that. But because of uh, production uh, limitations and trying to get through that, that back order list that they had from other dealers, including ourselves, um, they weren't able to get enough of these built to release to all their dealers, which is the goal, is that on release date, all their dealers will have one. So official release date is probably the day that we're releasing this, uh, October 10th of 2023 is the official release date. 
So really cool thing about this, it actually comes in about $1,000 cheaper than the Fern did. I think the Fern was like at $21,000. This is going to come in at $19,999. So just under $20,000, uh, a bargain. I know of people, course. you probably got that sitting in your wallet. So $19,999 is going to be the uh, sale price on it. Uh, obviously, it's an F-style mandolin. Um, the tone woods on it is going to be a red spruce top or Adirondack spruce top. Maple back and sides, and just like before, they're using their finest maple, uh, their their top, top oh, grade so of flame on the, on the maple and on the spruce mm -hmm. on the top mm -hmm. for this top level uh, model for that. Um, it does have an ebony head plate on the uh, the headstock as well as an ebony fretboard, um, ivory binding all the way around that, a uh, single action truss rod on this, uh, ebony adjustable bridge, uh, just like standard. Um, it does have Waverly tuners on this one. It's got the pearl, uh, real pearl buttons and kind of that uh, satin uh, silver finish on the, uh, the tuners. It has also a pearl nut on the, uh, the master model. Um, tone bracing is going to, or tone bar bracing on this, uh, kind of, again, they're Standard. trying to man, uh, recreate exactly the way Lloyd did the, uh, the 1923 model. Uh, it does have a hand rub varnish on this, a Cremona Brown is what they call it. So it's a, it's a Cremona burst. This one came in a little bit redder than uh, I've seen before. So most of those Cremonas are going to be just a little bit darker brown with a little less of the red uh, tint to it. But, you know, that I guess that each one's going to vary. They're, they're we'll done see. by hand, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is a high gloss uh, finish on all that uh, varnish. Um, the neck comes in right at one and one sixteenth, so it's the standard again that vintage uh, kitchen very, mandolin. Very V shaped. Very V shaped yeah. neck, so very it feels much like uh, a lot of those Lloyd Lore mandolins I have played. Mm -hmm. It does come with a hard shell case, and they did something really cool with this. They did a vintage retro case, so it looks like the same case design as what you would have got in. But the green interior looks just like what it would be as a green uh, interior with the, the interesting the, the side pockets on mm -hmm. it and the, the slots. And then they did a ton of really cool case this candy is where on this. It really, really and I got to cool. hand it to Gibson. If they are going to take mandolins off the market for a couple of years and do something that's very special, you might as well deliver all the way. And they did that. And we're going to show some clips of what you're going to find inside that case. But they did not hold anything back. They've got some pamphlets from the recreations a, of the pamphlets from 1923. Recreation of the sale ad from 23, as well as a certificate of authenticity so, that is signed by uh, the now president of Gibson. Yep, and it's got a Lloyd Lawrence photo in it and a very very nice leather bound uh, that little book, book. yeah, yeah so the book is really it's got cool. a photo of Lloyd Lore and that's going to be your uh, warranty card or your your uh, certificate of authenticity in that leather bound book and a leather pick pouch which I got one of those uh, a while back is kind of a, a sample uh, very well done like they they pulled out all, all the, the case all candy the stock. that you could ever want and more I mean which is to be expected if you're gonna spend twenty thousand dollars on a mandolin you better get some case candy. But you know it, what I'm it saying? It's special here because that wasn't available in no, the, the former sure ferns. Wasn't. This is just something special to make this commemorative as a, a 1923 reissue. I would say this is by far the most uh, extent of what we have seen Gibson do, especially in mandolins, as far as a recreation. It really is uh, the extras. I know companies in the past have done, like Fender has done, re reissues of uh, old Stratocasters, and they brought back the case candy. The original strap, it has a strap also it as does. well. Um, to make it more like way it would have been shipped as that, uh, you know, in 1923, uh, Gibson really did go back and try to do some stuff that is super extra special. It's not exactly the way they uh, did it in 23. But it but makes it more commemorative, stuff, yes. Yeah, so. so I got to hand to them. I know we don't know really go on too long about what you're going to get in the case, but they really, <laughs> it's, it's worth mentioning it's what they did on that. Yeah. Um, but then overall, in this one, they said they just went back to some of the 1923s. And, and uh, Gibson, I got to play this one. They have a 1923 of uh, July uh mandolin from uh, Lloyd Lore that they own and they use that as kind of their standard bearer to really analyze check all the dimensions check all the uh, the bracing pattern make sure everything was almost identical to the way it was built in which there were some slight changes through the years between sure. what they're like the current more modern fern mandolin was so they decided if we're going to do this let's make it match almost note for note and that, that includes with the pick guard very good look to it uh the the, obviously, the uh, kind of yellowing a bit of the binding on that, I think, just looks very classic, which you're going to get with that varnish finish. Um, but the biggest thing comes down to tone. And like yeah. you were saying, playing this thing, it's just got something different. It's got, we've played a number of lores. We've been fortunate enough to play some, not own them, but. 
I would say that over the past few years, uh, there's a more modern sound to mandolins, and it seems to be a darker, more woofy. thick, woofy type of sound. And you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and we're starting to see other companies that are coming back and kind of fighting against that tone, bringing back some of the brightness and stuff. Some of those are maybe overdoing it. Um, but there's like this back and forth of the low end and, and that. And when it comes down to an actual lower mandolin, there's a certain clarity to the high-end notes. I know we were talking to Darren about this. He got his uh, uh, Lloyd Lore mandolin here not too long ago. And there's a top end to these mandolins that nothing else had, as well as a certain mid-range low-end frequency uh, response that is there. And I have to say, this really does seem to have that kind of tone palette. I would agree. There, there's just a clarity to it. And and it's funny because the people who own actual Lloyd Lores, Alan Bybee and Darren, and we've talked to them throughout the years, they talk about how it changed their sound, their the way they hear the mandolin, their attack, because they start to recognize they don't have to create that sound. It's already in the mandolin. And and seriously, I, I was totally blown away when you strummed that and I got to play it for the first time. It is closer to a original lore sounding mandolin than I have ever heard. Uh, Gibson put out. Yeah, I would agree. It's just a, it's very balanced the whole way through. So it doesn't really overemphasize that bass response or that wolfiness like you're talking. It's still got a deep chop. Don't get me wrong, but it's more pronounced. It's, we talk about this in the guitar world a lot with some of these higher end guitars. There's like this uh, attack that pops out and just kind of grabs you, and it's not really like uh, like you said the low end. It's not it re there's a low end there, but it's just very defined and very you know like I said it just kind of attacks more, and, and that's what I'm hearing out of this man. And as a player, there's like this ease to it. Like the the action is set very well right now. This it's got great action, but you don't have to play like you mentioned when when those guys talked about it. You kind of change your attack a little bit because you don't have to dig the tone out of it. It's just kind of very easy. very balanced and very poppy and that's not a brand new instrument this hasn't been played more than maybe a couple hours so very impressed with the tone um i agree i think if you're gonna pull your mandolins from the market for that long without any you better word, come up people with a good reason like what's going on with gibson are they closing down or they you know do you have any news we had news we weren't allowed to really talk about it but actually to deliver on it you know you, you kind of set a bar pretty high and people are going to say well if you're going to spend that much time you better deliver something and i will say that uh right out of the gate i am very I impressed with what they've it. i really uh, do all right, so here. that kind of gets us to our rating system here, Jeremy. And we do this based on mandolins in like uh, price ranges. So we're not trying to compare this against, uh, you know, the inexpensive or mandolins. or Kentucky. Uh, this is definitely a top-tier level mandolin. And we do this on a scale of 1 to 5, 5 being our highest uh, value, uh, 1 being our lowest. So let's start with the tone, Jeremy. What do you think? Tone, we've already gone on uh, quite a while here about it. Tone is just exactly what I would look for in a mandolin. Um, I easily rate this a five out of five. I, I I would agree with you. There is something to this mandolin I have never heard before, and uh, it's pretty impressive. So that, that one's an easy one. Uh, setup and playability. Also, you know, I I did lower the action a little bit from what it got shipped at, and that's because I become a little bit of a wimp on on action. I remember when I first started out, I had this tall action and and played well with it. And a lot of bluegrass players prefer that because it gives you a lot more volume because more downward pressure on the top. So it was probably set up for that standard bluegrass player. I did lower the action a little bit, and it didn't take much, and it just right now it plays like butter. So out of the box, I would rate it a four, I'd say a four out of five. Okay. I got to play it as well, I would say, as it sits right now. And that's, again, that's something that we kind of do uh, out of the box. It, it was a little bit high. I will say this one that I'm playing was a lot higher uh, that uh, for setup. But that one right there, uh, we got that down. didn't take long. Uh, it was... You know, like you said, about a four. Uh, it now plays extremely well. Yeah. So I'd give it a four and a half to four point seven five now, but um, it's just really easy to adjust that with a, sure. a mandolin. So super easy. Uh, Build quality. <laughs> this is where it comes down to it. Uh, this is a true masterpiece. Yep. People ask a lot of times, you know, what's the difference between a brand like Gibson and some of the independent smaller builders that are also have pretty high price tag because it takes a lot to build a mandolin, and a lot of it comes down to that 
final build quality, the, the, the fine details of the binding, the finish work on it uh, with a varnish just looks flawless. David does such the a burst great is job perfect. of his varnish finishes too. I wish everybody could do a varnish finish as well as that. Yeah, it gorgeous. really does look right uh, overall. So uh, my yeah. only my only thing that I noticed, and I think you noticed too, too that we were expecting a little bit more of a brown, uh, closer to some of the early uh, Lloyd Lord Mainlin. So this one does have a little bit more red to it, but that's just kind of a. I guess I'll probably get into the aesthetics part of it next. But yeah. the actual build quality of it, easily a five out of five. Absolutely, I agree with that. Five. Okay, so then we get to aesthetics, and that's kind of the looks. I love the the appearance of these. I'm not a big pick guard fan. I never really used them, and same with the. Uh, fretboard extension, but this is a recreation of the 1923. This is what I you sure expect to look it. for. Now, I, I would definitely keep it on there. I don't, it no longer gets in my way like it used to, but that is kind of the, the overall look they were going for, including, you know, getting rid of the fern and doing more of the, the traditional uh, flower, flower pot. pot on the top. Um, I Aesthetically beautiful. I would have hoped for a little bit more of a brown to the burst to be closer to that early uh, uh, Lloyd Lore period, and maybe David will contradict me on that he'll probably come back and tell us why it's maybe more they red. started more red and then over the years they kind of faded Fair i don't know but overall aesthetics i'm still going to give it a 4.5 the only knock i would have is just a little bit darker brown on the uh, burst i again you're hitting it right on the head of what i think on this mandolin the uh the wood selection is gorgeous this particular one the back is just uh, it's a very the 3D sides. Too. sides. The, neck. Uh, the neck. And, and I like the color. I really do. I expected the top to be a little bit more of a darker brown. Um, but I still like it a lot. And uh, I, I don't know. I would probably give it a 4.75. It's just not quite what I expected. But there's nothing wrong with it. I like it overall. And if I threw in what they did with the case and, and making that vintage case and all that, it would easily oh, yeah. put it at a 5. Because just that, that does add something to it. That, yeah. that feel of overall... Uh, aesthetic look and, and attention to detail. And then finally we get to the uh, over, I guess, uh, Shop Sustainable. We've talked about this. We don't really know exactly with Gibson. I know that they, they got their hands slapped once with uh, uh, sustainable harvesting of wood. I bet they're being on the up and up as much as possible. Eh, don't, I don't have any way, because of the size of Gibson, we can't really get that kind of information. So we still plant five trees for every Gibson we have to be on the safe side. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to say right now that we can't confirm that it passes our shop sustainable standard. Um, but hey, it never hurts to plant a few extra trees if yeah, you're yeah. wrong. Um, overall value, that's the final one. This is a tough one because I know there's going to be a lot of you out there going, $20,000 for a mandolin. You can buy a car for that. That's, and, and you're right. You are right. Um, but honestly, the mandolin market has kind of hit this mark. Uh, we see it in the guitar world right now. Uh, most of the boutique guitars are starting at seven to ten to twelve thousand dollars right now. Uh, mandolins have start have been there for long periods of time, and now something at this level, um, you know, there's a there's. We've been selling the the Fern Master models, and we've seen them sold uh, a lot at a higher price tag. This coming down with all the extras and all that kind of stuff, that's where, to me, it totally reverses that side of, oh, gosh, that's a, and it is a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. I can't but afford it. I, <laughs> but I still think uh, there's a definite value in there. So I can't quite give it a five-star uh, value for, for me personally, but I do see by watching the mandolin market and what it has allowed a mandolin at this price to be, I'm going to have to give it a four and a half. I, you know, there's a lot of great stuff that's going on here. It's just hard for me personally to swallow that high of a price tag on. Uh, but again, it's gosh, this is hard because I've seen so many of these sell for a lot more. Yeah. So. I'm going to somewhat uh, go against that grain in, in the fact that where we're going in light comparison to other Builders in the same I'm, one. I'm with this you. is this right here on the, the headstock right there adds a lot of value to it. it. Is it is a Gibson mandolin? It's got the history that comes with Gibson. It's got the resale value of Gibson. It's got the desirability of Gibson. And then they didn't under deliver on it. They they built a mandolin that is the closest reproduction of a Lloyd Lore era mandolin in tone and playability and in appearance. And lastly, they I think they knew that hey we're gonna have to deliver big on this. So the case alone, that you know, that's not a, an oh, inexpensive big, big, case big thing to get those custom built to be a, rep, a reproduction of those old ones. I'm sure it costs quite a bit per case. We know how much cases cost now just for a standard hard shell case to do that, and then add all that extra case candy. I know they used one of the uh, a family business uh, that is 
family of one of their uh, workshop people in the really? custom shop to do all the leather work. So the leather uh, book that we talked about, the leather pick pouches, the leather strap, that's all kind of internal with another U.S. built um, company, small business. So I think that's a very cool thing. Those obviously probably weren't very cheap either. No. Then the reproduction of the flyers, the ads, and all that stuff and then having the president of the company sign each one, they really set out to make this worth that $20,000 price tag. I'm gonna give it, I was, because of that, such a high price, I still have a hard time saying five. I'm gonna go 4.8. So I, I think they delivered it about as much as you can we on the mandolin never, in this price. have ever seen a 4.8. That, that was a lot to say that, hey, <laughs> these guys understood that it is a high price tag. It's not really outside of the market. I mean, you got red diamonds, you got, uh, uh, oh, Gilchrist, you got Nuggets, all those in that easily in that price range and above. I hear you. So I think I hear you. It's just my my uh, pocketbook just has a hard time going uh, twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, sure, sure. But again, people I compare it to a car. You. People compare it to a car. I agree. Yes, a car is going to last you about eight years, and then you've used up that that it's a resource that runs out. Um, a mandolin like this is a lifetime investment. You're going to have this and probably hand it down generations. Just like those 1923 Lloyd Lloyds. I'm not going to say this is going to be worth $100,000 later on like the Lloyd Lores, but this, for what you're paying for this, spread that out over the next 30, 50 years. I think it's definitely a worthwhile investment. I hear you. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get Jeremy to get you a tone sample of this mandolin so you can see if this is something that will fit you uh, because we all know it's going to fit Jeremy. Jeremy's going to order one of these. I'm positive. We are taking that. orders now, folks, and That's I right. also I have a GoFundMe where you guys can help me buy one. There you go. Well, I am a big fan of this mandolin. I think they, I. they did a great job, as you can tell from the tone sample, as well as our rating of it. Um, fantastic instrument. But like I mentioned earlier, this did come out in a pair of mandolins. They got two mandolins available that mm -hmm. will be the catalog for all of Gibson mandolins. This is the other the one. The other one is the it's F5G. They got new specs on that, new features from totally their old F5G. Vamped. They pretty much stole our F5G, I'm gonna say. They I'm did. gonna go out on a limb and say they stole our they F5G. Did. But we're going to tell you all about that. If you want to learn about the other new mandolin cover from Gibson, check out this video right here reviewing and talking about the new F5G from Gibson.